Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. Here we are in the astral plane. This will be the final episode of the series. But let's not get ahead of ourselves because we have a long way to go still. So the astral plane. So how this works is there are three high altars. You have to find your high altar and then you have to offer the Amulet of Yendor to your god. And these purple demon looking guys are uh, the, the three riders of the apocalypse, famine, death, and pestilence. So you'll often decide where you want to go based on who these guys are. Famine, death, and this will be pesty over here. I don't see anything else too threatening here. Usually there will be some liches and they'll because they're covetous, they'll and they have that covetous movement pattern. They'll teleport straight to you, which is annoying. So the, the whole name of the game here is positioning. Uh, let me check one more thing. Is it Titan down there? Okay, A mimic. That's interesting. So we fortunately started in an area that's like open, um, not surrounded by monsters, which is great. So we have some room to work with and do what we want to do here first. So. Yeah, sorry, I'm just taking this in. Um, yeah, so the name of the game here is positioning. Here, here's the number one rule. Don't get caught in a choke point with a one of the riders. Except maybe death if you think you can kill him quickly. The thing with them is they all have very dangerous attacks. So Famine, I think he'll stun you. And, and he also, which one stuns you? Let me look this up real quick so I don't give you misinformation. Okay, no, Pestilence stuns you. So f Famine... Oh, wait. They don't have a uh, stun written in there, too. I'm looking this up on the wiki real quick. Oh, that's how it works. So if they hit you with both of their attacks in the same turn, the second attack turns into a stun. That's how it works. All right. So they all can stun you. Um, and outside of that, death steals your max hit points. So in that, he'll take a lot of max hit points off of you. If you get into an extended fight with him, you'll it makes the rest of the astral much more dangerous to deal with. Um, famine drains your, your hunger. So I should have actually eaten till satiated before I got here, but oh well. Um, and you can get into this like problem where you're trying to eat. But you're also like getting attacked and like you're not helping, so it, that can be annoying. And then pestilence is really annoying too, because he'll keep inflicting sickness on you, which will it's basically a delayed insta death, and the timer gets cut shorter every time he attacks you. So you have to constantly be curing it. Um you can So Unicorn Horn isn't super reliable for curing it. I usually prefer to use um healing potions or holy water will cure it as well. And that, that's guaranteed. So just decide what your risk tolerance there and, and go for it. And all of them except for death are susceptible to Wands of Death. So I like to attack any of them except for death first. Although a lot of people go for death first because they think his drain attack isn't as deadly. Um, but I just like to be able to kill them with a wand of death. So I'm going to go... We're already in the upper right here, so I'm going to go right here to Famine first. And yeah, a lot of people, like, play Rushed or, like, freak out and stuff. This place really isn't that dangerous if you're not next to a rider. So don't be afraid to back up, reposition, and just make sure you don't get caught into bad spots. And we're probably going to end up using Conflict here soon. Samurai turns into a healer, so there's a shapeshifter here somewhere um and one more thing there's player monsters here they're pretty strong they have great ac and great equipment see this priest uh oh wait that's a priest hey there's no player monsters on that side which makes that side even more favorable i th i think really there's gotta be one here somewhere here we go. The Invisible Barbarian called Ron the Raider. So that's a player monster. Cave Woman called Mod the Pioneer. They're generated with artifacts. 
you can run into a guy with Vorpal Blade, so watch out for that. Um, Vorpal Blade's already been generated in our game, so we don't have to worry about that, fortunately. Um, but there's a lot of message spam going on, so you don't want to miss that and accidentally die to Vorpal Blade. So just be careful about that. I kind of feel like we should just put Conflict on. I'm going to wait till we get over to this door. So I'm in line with the door. I'm just going to destroy it because I like to be able to walk diagonally through doors. We're still levitating, which is fine. Although there's no doors on... Uh, oh, there's no traps on Astral, so it doesn't really matter. You hear a door unlock and open. So that was the riders. They can unlock doors. I don't know who just unlocked that one. Just open up. Death is probably walking through a door. That's kind of annoying if he's going to come up behind us. Pay attention to him. I'm going to raise this door. I'm going to put on conflict first. So my angel is going to turn into a hostile angel in a second. So zap. Digging. Or I'm actually going to back up. See, the, the instinct would be normally to move forward. But I did not want to get um, close to death. And, or who is that? Famine? And they'll push monsters out of the way. So if you're like surrounded by monsters, they'll slowly get to you and then you'll have nowhere to go. Um, so he's actually in line with us. I'm going to see if we can zap him with death through these enemies. A lot of the angels end up with reflection, so it could get bounced back, but we'll see what happens. Nope. We missed the angel, so who cares if it has reflection, and we killed famine. So as quickly as possible, we're going to try and get past this. Uh, they regenerate after a certain number of turns. They can regenerate quite quickly, so you want to get past them as soon as possible, because if this thing regenerated right next to us, um, that would be bad. Also be careful. Creating room with uh, ones of teleportation is very common in Astral, and it's very strong in Astral. Um, but if you teleport one of their corpses, it regenerates them, and they usually teleport right next to you. It's like a 1 in 13 or 14 chance that they don't. So don't zap them with teleport either. All right, so I'm going to jump. Uh, we're... I'm going to run around here. Soldier ant. I need to unlevitate so I can jump. I'm going to unlevitate right here. That's a shame, because jumping is really strong. It would have we'd be like at the door by now if we were jumping. Cool. I'm gonna raise this door. I'm gonna zap teleport in front of us and hope it doesn't hit the high priest. Oh, do we have probing? Hmm. Did we not find probing this whole game? So the high priest, you don't know which one they are until you're adjacent to them. And the same thing with the altar. See, they're just like aligned. You can probe the high priest to find its alignment, um, which will give you a hint before you enter the temple if it's the one you actually care about or not. Um, but we can't do that, so we just have to work our way through it. Let me look up the range on teleport. If you tell so that all the high priests are generated peaceful. If you ex if you hit them with one to teleport, they get angry. Um, let's see. It is a beam. How many tiles it is? I think all beams are the same. So that should be six to thirteen squares. Ooh, that's. I don't want to risk hitting him, so I'm just gonna fight whatever is in front of us here. Priestess of Offler. Cool, so we progress one. These choke points are the worst. Oh, cool, perfect. High Priest moves, so I'm gonna zap teleport at these guys, and everything that's in front of us blocking away will move, out of, or get teleported out of the way. Beautiful, nothing jumped, or nothing jumped in our, in our way, so we're gonna jump out of the way. Oh, heck yeah. This is why jumping is so valuable. I'm keeping a light eye on the message log to see if we get any clues on what altar this is. I haven't seen anything yet. I am going to remove conflict because my next move is going to put us adjacent to the priest. Okay. 
And let's jump next to the high altar. Neutral. Well, that was fast. This is where we want to be. Um, we've won at this point. Um, so just in case this wasn't the neutral high altar, we have a Helm of Opposite Alignment, which will turn us either Lawful or um, Chaotic. But each, if you're neutral, it'll, it'll only turn to one of those alignments every time. So if this was a Chaotic Altar and the Helm of Opposite Alignment turned us Lawful, we would have to... It, it would never turn us Chaotic, so we'd have to find another Altar. But you can use Helm of Opposite Alignment to change your alignment to the Altar and then still win the game. It's kind of an awkward way to, to win. <laughs> After all that, just give the amulet to a, some other god. Um, but it counts as a win. And a win is a win in that hack. So um, don't be ashamed to use that. But that was way too freaking easy, guys. Uh, I think that's just preparation for you. Um, I kind of hoped we... Well, this could have gotten really dangerous if... I just moved up here and we got stuck surrounded by enemies next to Famine, but we played that smartly and we used the teleport and we were jumping and we just got right through here with no problems. That's crazy. That was the cleanest astral I've ever had. Well, here we are. We'll go offer. Offer the Cursed Amulet of Yendor. You offer the Amulet of Yendor to the Lady, an invisible choir sings, and you are bathed in radiance. The voice of the Lady rings out, Mortal, thou hast done well. In return for thy service, I grant thee the gift of immortality. And we won the game. Here's our full inventory. Well, that was a lot of fun, guys. Um, wow. The end of an era. Oh, look, it says our t-shirt. With the text Aberzombie and Fitch. That's funny how it shows you that too. But that was a ton of fun. Man, we've been at this for months. And that was a lot of a lot of episodes. I'm going to go ahead and do another playthrough at some point. And this one is very slow, talking through things. The next one will be faster for people who don't want to watch 40 plus episodes. We'll make it a lot shorter um, and digestible for people. And I hope you uh, stick around. Lots of good roguelike content um, I have in the works ready to get uploaded to the YouTube and to, to stream on Twitch. So I'm looking forward to it. So I hope you all learned everything and enjoyed that. Thanks again for watching, guys. I cannot thank you enough. That was so much fun. Well, that was fun. So I looked back and we only spent about 18 turns on Astral, which is probably a new record for me. Now that's probably about half luck and then half good preparation and strategy. Of course getting the correct altar on the first try is luck, um, but we also had a 2 and 3 chance of getting a, an altar that would work for us due to the Helm of Opposite alignment we were carrying. So it really wasn't too unlikely. I do kind of wish we ran into more trouble so that we could have showcased Astral some more, but sometimes you just have to take what the game gives you. Due to that though, I think I'll end up doing another Let's Play sometime soon, and I'll just be of the planes. I'll start entering the planes, and then we'll go till the Ascension. And to take a broader look at the run overall, now I may be forgetting some of the beginning since that was so long ago at this point. Uh, but overall, that run did feel fairly typical. We did play the early game slow and cautious, um, and through that we slowly improved on our position, and by the time we got through the mid game, the second half of the game was a breeze. Well, thanks for watching guys. That was a ton of fun and it has truly been enjoyable to make these and then to interact with you all through the comments and through the Discord and elsewhere. Feel free to comment below and let me know what you thought of the series and leave any feedback and ask any questions you may have. I always love to see what you guys have to say and I do respond to every question. Oh, and one more thing. Uh, so just for the state of this channel going forward, um, since this just concluded and this was a pretty big portion of the content that I was uh, uploading. I do want to hear feedback from you guys on what you'd like to see next. I do have quite a list of my own as far as content goes that I'd like to do. Um, probably a sh few more short NetHack videos on various topics. Um, some more Let's Plays of other roguelikes like Golden Crown Hotel, Hack, maybe some Cogmind. Um, but I want to hear your ideas. So if you have anything you'd like to see, please let me know. Go ahead and leave me a comment on this video. 
or you can join the Discord and let me know there, and I'll take note of that. And if you have been enjoying the content, feel free to like, subscribe, tell a friend, come check out my Twitch channel, all that good stuff. I always appreciate you guys. And, well, I'm going to stop here before I end up rambling too much. Um, seriously, thank you all again, and I hope to see you all here for my next video. Later, guys.